Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the GMK Tech Nookbox M5. While this mini PC sits in the mid-tier range, this one really surprises us with its gaming and emulation capabilities. And the best thing? You can pick this up for around $200. Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribe. This unit was sent to us from GMK Tech for video review. No cash was exchanged, and we'll do our best to keep this as bias-free as possible. As the name is the Nugbox M5, it's instantly recognizable that we have a mid-tier mini PC. It'll be amazing for office tasks, and it won't break the bank. The one we have for review is a 32GB model, it has 1TB storage, with Windows 11 Pro installed. There's one with half the memory and half the storage, and this also comes pre-installed with Windows 11. This one's cheaper, and currently has a coupon for $100 off. But if you want to go for the cheapest option, there's Barebone. It comes with no memory, storage, or operating system. But if you have the spare parts and know-how, this is a great option for the best bang for buck. There's currently a coupon for $100 off, but if you use the coupon code PANDORIAM5 at checkout, you can grab the M5 bare bones for $199. This code will be valid for the next two weeks, so if you're interested in the product, grab it while you can. They're also on Amazon and AliExpress, and the links are in the video description down below. So this is what came. Nothing special until we open it up. <laughs> so yeah, it's very similar to any other GMK Tech mini piece we had. If we check the back, it's from Jinjin China. The M5 32 1TB model. As we're in Japan, it says JP, and the only regional difference will be the power cord and the manuals. Very nice indeed. They're usually top of the game when it comes to presentation, and this one is no different. Underneath that, we've got a piece of card, and inside this, the manual. And as this is for the Japanese region, this one's in Japanese, English, and Chinese. Underneath that, we have two boxes. In the first, we have the VESA mount, this is for attaching your mini PC to the back of a monitor. We also have a HDMI cable. It's around one and a half meters long. We have a cable for the power. This goes into the adapter, which is found in the last box. There's a barrel jack at the end, and it's rated for 19 volts, 3.42 amps. They can supply just under 65 watts. And finally, the warranty card. Boing. So let's have a closer look. The two stickers tell us we have a Ryzen 7 CPU coupled with Radeon graphics. Most of the case is made of a hard plastic, which is great to hear as it won't interfere with our Bluetooth or Wi-Fi signal. On the front we got the pinhole for BIOS reset. There's a power switch in bright green. 3.5mm audio jack, USB Type-C, and two USB 3.2s. Moving to the right now, we've got a massive air vent. This should help with cooling and also with maintenance, as it'll be very easy to clean out dust with a can of compressed air. And on the back is where all the action is two USB 2.0s, display port, underneath that HDMI, and to the right, two Ethernet ports, both rated at 2.5 gigs, DC power, and Kensington. Kensington. Underneath here is where the heat gets blown out. On the left side, more space for air intake. With the case being slightly larger and having increased airflow, GMK Tech have responded well to previous critique regarding thermals. Underneath we have the vase mount holes, and more for air intake. They've also added slightly taller feet than usual. So if you put this on the back of your monitor using the vase mount, air can still get in. That's about time for the size comparison. The GMK Tech Nugbox M5 is larger than the B-Link Mini S. And it's slightly larger than the faster K4. Here's the little baby G2. But for the most similar size, we have the Chewy Lockbox X 2023. The dimensions are pretty much identical, but with the taller feet, the M5 can get more air from underneath. Let's bring in some common items. The Nintendo Game Boy. And how about a Roybush tea bag? The GMK Tech M5 is around four Roybush tea bags big. Now to the specs. This PC has the Ryzen 5700U. The U stands for ultra low power, which refers to processors designed for thin and light laptops. Fingers crossed, this should stay rather cool. And with eight core, 16 threads, with speeds going to 4.3 gigahertz, it's no slouch. The DDR4 shares the memory with the Radeon Vega GPU, and it'd be interesting to see how well this GPU can perform. It can display three monitors up to 40K and 60Hz, but we will be testing this on an ultra-wide QHD monitor up to 144Hz. Anyway, let's turn her on. So the first time we turn it on, we'll be greeted to the Windows setup screen. You'll be asked to type in a username, which country you're in, and what language you want to use in Windows. This process takes around five minutes, and then you're pretty much good to go. To get Windows activated, all you need to do is go online, wait five seconds, and it'll be done automatically. 
With HDMI, we can change the resolution to ultra-wide QHD to a maximum of 100 Hz. But if we use a DisplayPort cable, we can actually raise this to 144 Hz. And while we can't exactly test out the full 4K resolution, this looks brilliant on this monitor. Make sure to try out the corn pub. First thing I do with a new install of Windows is check out Ninite.com. It's basically a place to get free tools and software, like internet browsers, office and antivirus. A one-stop shop that does everything in a few clicks. So let's demonstrate what we can do with this PC. If you need to make some serious documents like spreadsheets or databases, this mini PC can deal with those without a sweat. If you need to make some 2D graphics using Krita or Photoshop, this one has you covered. Or if you fancy some exploring, here's the streets of Osaka. Of course, using it for usual things like internet shopping on Amazon or even AliExpress, no issues whatsoever. And even though this Ryzen processor does not support AV1, it manages 4K YouTube videos with ease. According to this little doodah here, HDCP 2.2 is supported, so you'll have no problems while playing 4K Netflix or Amazon Prime Video. Before we test out some games, let's have a look at the benchmarks. PC user bench places the M5 above both the i7 units we reviewed recently. We can see why if we check out Geekbench. The GPU pulls ahead, especially when using OpenCL. Gains can be had if we push TDB to 35 from the default 15. But remember, these are benchmarks designed to push the system and won't necessarily translate to higher FPS in-game. In TimeSpy, we can see that it competes with the 12450H, which can be found in more expensive mini-PCs. But if we ignore GPU and focus only on CPU-bound tasks, the 5700U falls behind. And here's this mark. Hi, Shizuku. Hi. We can easily connect our controller via Bluetooth, but let's see if the M5 can game in ultra-wide 1440p. And yes, it can. Performance settings at around 47 FPS. We need to remember that this unit can also use FreeSync, so if you have a compatible monitor, you'll have no tearing. And here's some Tekken 7. At the same resolution, it does cut off the sides, but at medium settings, we get around 30 FPS. And if you want 144 FPS, well, how about some Command & Conquer Remastered Edition? What a great game. And League of Legends. Same resolution again, at medium graphics settings. Around 90 to 100 FPS. But what if you don't need this high resolution? Let's get into some 10 HP gaming. Sonic Mania. Rocket League. Second 7 again. We get around 50 FPS on medium settings, but if we lower it down to 720p, full speed ahead. Here's Dota 2, maxed out at 1080p. Unfortunately, we're only getting about 45 FPS, but if we click it down two notches, we're at over 70. And here's CS2, medium settings, 720p. While it's not near the high frames required for pro gamers, it's in a playable state. But if you want it to run better, you need to get a computer with a faster GPU. If you've been keeping an eye at the top right, both CPU and GPU temps have rarely been above 65 degrees Celsius. And a lot of that has to do with the amount of power this needs to run. At idle, it pulls under 8 watts, and if we run the Grid Order Sport benchmark, we're getting under 30, and you can expect this for most games. If we take a look at the BIOS, we don't have much to work with. We do have Secure Boot, which is needed if you want to play some stupid games with DRM, but we also have a TDP selection list, where we can increase the power draw to 35 watts. At idle, it does fluctuate a little, but it's far more noticeable when under load. I mean, have a listen. 
There's maybe around 3 FPS that's gained, but with a lot of heat. And it now pulls 48 watts from the wall. Here it is again at 15 watts, and listen for yourself. If you wanted to, you could power this by USB-C. Here's the adapter from the Steam Deck. All working fine. When it comes to emulation, the M5 can run every system up to the PS2 and more. Here we have one of the most demanding titles, upscaled to 720p, running at full speed. And it even manages to push some PlayStation 3. It's not quite full speed, but it comes pretty close, which is impressive for this very affordable mini PC. And here's to wipe out Fury. For better performance, you need to grab the next tier up. And PS Vita is also possible. Here's Wipeout 2048. And to finish off, a little Wii U. On the Switch, Sonic Mania ran full speed, and Mario Odyssey was around 50 FPS. So the M5 is pretty capable. Let's open it up. To do so, just pull. So the hole in the centre here is for a fan if you required active cooling. And to take off this top plate, we need to remove four screws in each corner. On the left here we have a Lexar NVMe drive, with the heating included to keep it cool. Here we have two populated slots of DDR5 memory. And this 32GB version is two sticks of 16 gigs and 3200MTs. Made by Whoopersit. We can remove these and upgrade if we wish, and we can do the same with the NVMe. This is held in by one small screw. We can see clearly this is the Lexar NM620. Underneath this is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip, but if you used to get the bare bones version, you need to add some DDR4 memory, as well as some storage. This Kingspec NVMe was picked up fairly cheap, but as long as you use a PCIe NVMe at 2280, it should fit fine. We can then put the case back together, then we need to install an operating system. We could use Windows, but there are multiple free ones, like Badocera and PopOS both of which are based on Linux. We'd first need to make a USB stick on a different computer so we can install it into our mini PC. So download the image, open up Banana Etcher, then burn it to a USB stick. Hit yes, let it do its thing. Once the process is finished, we can remove it and install it into our mini PC. Turn on the computer, then keep hammering that delete button. Once in the BIOS, move over to save and exit, and then select our USB stick. Let the process do its thing, select your username, language, and you should be good in no time. So now I can watch videos, or even use it like a game box with Steam. I think it's about time for the pros and the cons. The M5 is excellent value for money. We get 144Hz to ultra wide QHD, and it easily holds its own against the competition. At 720p we can get a taste of PlayStation 3, Vita, and even a little Switch emulation, and even games like Counter-Strike 2 can be playable on this machine. Unfortunately, there's only one NVMe slot, so using the M2 eGPU solution isn't possible here. HDMI 2.1 would have future-proofed it with newer monitors, and it gets a bit noisy if you click it up to 35 watts in the BIOS. GMK Tech have done an amazing job with the M5. It has performance and price that is difficult to match, and provided you don't need to do any AAA gaming, we can easily recommend this mini PC. As we finish up with a bit of Rocket League, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Here at Team Pandori, we do video reviews like this, as well as fix them cheap arcade boxes, as well as the A500 Mini. If you want to help support our work, please jump on, or a simple like and subscribe would do us a solid. Anyway, this has been the Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! If you enjoyed this video, please slam that like button. Why not try one of these fine videos above? It's me, Batman.